All right, guys, I'm coming in to drop a video fresh off the fix with Neil Pickup, Ray, Coach Ray, LaVon, Devin, talking about the big match, and, of course, Ingen Terzi, and then LaVon's interpreter, which put a big cold shower on that boner real quick. But I just want to talk about a few things and explain a few things on why I get upset about some of the stuff. A lot of you guys think that I'm jealous. Um... To a degree, because I do think that some of the glory is unjust. I think that uh, when the going got tough, the sport got going, the athletes got going. So hearing about their bullshit about gains really upsets me. And uh, I just want to drop a couple stories, real life stories that I feel are parallel to my annoyance, my fucking annoyance with it when I watch it. And it's not just about them being East West or being good enough, because honestly, once you cross that line, once you cross a line where you're no longer a natural, nobody knows what your good enough is. It then becomes like a willingness project and a sacrifice project. Your good enough stopped whatever level you were at when you just decide to cross that line. It's the truth. You decided that you weren't good enough. So listen, check this out. I used to be, now I accept it. And I take matches with guys that I know are openly doing it. And fucking case it out, it It is what it is. I accept it. But I have a problem with people like really like pumping their chest and, you know, getting their feathers fluffed and peacocking. Because, all right, it's not reality. And without that external thing, you don't exist. None of those feathers, none of that peacock exists. I used to have a group of guys I would go out with when we would do like the clubbing thing and the nightlife thing and stuff like that. One one guy in particular was a very night and day like like Jekyll Hyde type character. Super introverted, super shy. Straight up. Super, like, almost awkwardly Asperger, weirdo shy. Like, didn't even want to be in the public setting. Said guy got into doing a little bit of fucking uh, cocaine, MDMA, ecstasy, booze, whatever, all of it, meth, I don't know, these guys got into some crazy shit sometimes, all of a sudden, he was the fucking, now this guy, pre-drugs, was almost weird to have kick around, dude, he looked like a kidnap victim, he was fucking there with his hoodie up, and looked like Georgie from it, he was like fucking, you know, all weird, Get, the, get all those fucking drugs in you that, like, really expand on your personality. All of a sudden, homeboy's over there making friends with tables. Table full of fucking chicks. Talking to them. Out there, first guy on the dance floor with the fucking pumps and the fucking fist bumps. No problems. Then the motherfucker has the audacity to call the other guys in the group shy and lame. Now, motherfucker wanted to be in a basement with a blanket over him and the shades drawn pre-drugs. That's him. Then he goes and gets the drugs and wants to start calling other people that were 20 steps ahead of him on the evolutionary social curve and wants to start calling them lame and shy and boring. And I'm just like sitting there fucking flabbergasted. This is a true story. I actually watch this unfold. And it's like, you are nothing without the drug. You're living in a fucking fake reality. It's not you. It's whatever that drug does to you that gives you that result. And sure, you were funny for the hot minute. But when you wake up tomorrow, guess what you are? You're still fucking Georgie Porgy Pudding Pie who wants to put the fucking blanket over you. And if he had just gone out there and done that, 
I might have been like with the eyeball roll, like pff, what a fucking difference. But it was the way that the peacock went like, pff, you guys are like, don't know how to have fun. Look at me. Look at me go. Watch me, you lame motherfuckers. And then started actually almost being insulting. And when you see what we see with people who do steroids, they go from fucking the norm to all of a sudden, like, whatever result they're getting. Even, like, watching LeVon talking in the third person through his interpreter, like, every arm wrestler's dream is to get one pin on him. I mean, oh, God. That, 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 that just makes me want to bring motherfucker down to planet Earth. Like, you were that nerdy-ass motherfucker, and now all of a sudden you are find yourself in the position where you're the coolest guy in the room, but what's the reason for it? Why? Why are you there? What are you without it? What are you one degree removed from all your fucking fun shit? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. We can all do it. You know what we can all do, too? We could change the sport of boxing and just dip our wraps in plaster like sometimes somebody does. They've, in the past, dipped it, their wraps in plaster and fucking smashed somebody's cheekbones in and jaws in and teeth in. And then it's not even a fist fight anymore. Then it's just basically like who lands the first clean punch and a motherfucker dies. I mean, we can change the sport, keep going, you can do what they do. You can do what they do. Man, that shit's crazy to me. It's a crazy ideology to just think like you can do what they do. Now, the peacocking, that's why it bothers me, is because it's all a fake resulted peacock. Oh, yeah, you got to do the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, bullshit. Go through the lumps and bruises and don't do, and don't get the gains and get the injuries. Fuck, Levon's on all the gear in the world, and what has he pulled one time in the last three years? Come on, man. Giant fucking pussy. Pulling nothing in how long? And, and, and. Still picking up injuries in his 30s and shit. Let's see where his longevity goes. Man, it's, it's, I just don't know how everyone sees it through such a skewed lens. It's, it's, it's not hatred, but if you're going to really, it is hatred, but I just keep it under wraps. But when you're going to peacock on everybody and piss on everybody and act like you're just came from another planet, as my boy did, who acted like he was the funnest guy in the fucking building because he could just roll up on any table and start a conversation because he was on fucking 15 different substances and thinking he was in Dr. Seuss land doing green eggs and ham. Was he really funny? Or were the fucking drugs bringing something out of him from another dimension? I mean, let's be realistic here. Uh, fuck it, guys. The other thing, when everyone says you can do it, and listen, this isn't some Bible-thumping shit, but A, it's illegal. If you're caught with them here, I don't give a fuck about other countries, just in general, here, if you're caught with them, do jail time. It's, a, it's an actual substance that people have gone to jail for and gotten in trouble for. And B, no major sport wants any affiliation with that shit. It's banned everywhere. Now, regardless of, yes, the Olympics, there's juicers. Yes, the NBA, the NFL, tennis, swimming. We all know that. But it's still way frowned upon and people are removed from it. Like, no, we don't have that. Even though they know it, they try to ensure that there's some scapegoats and protocols and they don't ally themselves with it. So the grotesque usage of it keeps us held down. So even though, like, you're going to at least pretend enough to play the fucking game, at least keep it clean just enough to play the fucking game. We can understand that there's cheaters and outliers and shit like that, but you got to keep it clean enough to play the fucking game. Right now, what we're doing is, I believe, hindering the sport a lot. Why are we in the Olympics? Why aren't we here with... Well, there's a lot of reasons, but I'm going to tell you what, that's always going to be one of them in the mix. So with the peacocking and your drug and your fist bumping and your techno dancing, just remember that when it all wears off, you're a 175 pound fucking nerd and you're not as great as you think you are. So regardless of your results, fuck you.